Hello and welcome to Hot Pursuit, uh, part of Ahwal video and podcast series. Uh, today we are going to talk about the breaking news, uh, Armenia, Azerbaijan at war through Karabakh. My guest is uh, Thomas Deval from London, a senior expert with Carnegie Europe. Welcome, Tom. Good to see you, Yavuz. In addition, uh, Tom is the writer of a book called Black Garden, Armenia and Azerbaijan through peace and war. Uh, and uh, one of the top um, experts in the world about the Caucasus and especially uh, Azerbaijan Ar and Armenian conflict, if not the top expert. Uh, welcome again, and let's start uh, immediately uh, with um, what triggered this this conflict so unexpectedly out of the blue. Well, it's not entirely unexpected. There was um, a few days of clashes uh, in July on the Armenian-Azerbaijani border. About 15 people died then. Um, so that was already a warning signal, but that was in a very limited area. And since then, we've seen the rhetoric rise on both sides, it has to be said. Um, there's also a new leader of the Karabakh Armenians um, who has been making some quite bellicose statements. The Karabakh Armenians also made an announcement that they were moving their parliament from the current city, Stepanaket, to Shusha, which is the former uh, big uh, Azerbaijani city, which was seen as a provocative move. Why now? Um, well, um, I guess um, this is a mountainous area. If you're going to launch military action, which Azerbaijan seems to be doing today, you want to do it uh, while the weather is still, um, is still OK, uh, before it gets cold in the mountains. And also the political context I, I guess um, before the US elections, um, I think the Azerbaijanis think that the US, who used to have a big interest in this uh, conflict, one of the mediators, they, they see that the US is, is, is very disengaged from the region and preoccupied with the election. Uh, maybe a third reason is that the OSCE, which is the organization, the organi organization for security cooperation in Europe, which is mediating this conflict, is currently a leadership crisis, so they're not providing uh, they don't have any leaders in their top positions. So, so maybe um, Azerbaijan calculated um, that this was a good moment to try limit um, military action. The, the big question is, is this just a limited military action or is it something even bigger than that? Mm -hmm. uh, there are conflicting reports, uh, because it's still breaking news, uh, which side pushed the button first? But I, as I understand from your, uh, what you're telling me is that it, it was Azerbaijan who opened fire first, or who moved in first. Yes, I mean, I'm not exempting the Armenians from blame, but basically the Armenians won the war of the 1990s. They have all the territory they want. They control parts of what is internationally regarded Azerbaijani territory. So the Azer uh, Armenians don't have an incentive in starting fighting. Their incentive is to normalize the status quo. Um, mm. The side who wants to, who has an interest in uh, uh, military activity is the, is the, is the, is the Azerbaijani side. Um, even though I think we all know, understand that, that, that war uh, solves nothing in the longer run. Um, ultimately, the, the, the two sides will have to talk. Um, but for various reasons, um, Azerbaijan calculates um, that military action will, will win it something. You gave, uh, you cited the background uh, regarding Karabakh moves, parliament move, etc., etc. Uh, and there is also another background. Uh, we also have been reporting uh, with the data uh, issued by Syrian Observatory of Human Rights, which uh, reported that at least 300 jihadis uh, from Syria uh, were uh, transferred to Azerbaijan about a week ago, some days ago which uh, also should perhaps be added into this context. Yes, I've, I've seen those reports. I've also seen people strongly denying them. Um, so that, that's a bit of a mystery to me. I wouldn't be the person to comment on them. Um, but um, I think the new factor, which, and if this is confirmed, this would be part of this new factor. And, and, and you know this as well as me, Yavuz, is what is uh, is the strong Turkish support for Azerbaijan. This did not used to be the case a few years ago. Turkey would be a side which politically supported a uh, Azerbaijan, but always said that ha this has to be done. There has to be a peaceful resolution of the conflict. They had sympathy with Azerbaijan. Uh, they used the leverage of the closed Armenian 
uh, Turkish border. So they were certainly on the side of Azerbaijan, but never supported Azerbaijan in military action. This seems to be uh, the new factor that, that Erdogan's Turkey is openly supporting an Azerbaijani military campaign. Um, every other country in the world is calling for a ceasefire, de-escalation, including Russia. Um, but um, uh, Turkey is openly supporting one side in, in this conflict. Indeed, uh, Germany, France, uh, uh, not yet the United States, but Russia, Iran, uh, EU, uh, all of these uh, countries and, and European Union as well uh, called for ceasefire. Uh, whereas in Turkey, uh, government, uh, the palace, uh, also uh, the opposition, uh, the mayor of Istanbul, mayor of Izmir, which are uh, the mayors of the main opposition, CHP, uh, they openly declare through Twitter that they are together with their quote-unquote uh, Armenian brothers. And uh, so this is... Uh, Azerbaijani, Azerbaijani brothers, yes. Azerbaijani brothers, yes. <laughs> uh, sorry. Uh, and uh, this is a new, uh, this is a new Turkey, perhaps, uh, as you described it. Uh, and uh, this, this, is, this seems to be the only country now sort of supporting continued uh, clashes and... Uh, 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 war in, in, in the region. Uh, does it sound strange to you, given given the, uh, the situation that Turkey is in? Yes, I mean, obviously, the, the exception being um, the Kurdish, uh, the Kurdish parties and so on, which have traditionally been um, um, in favor of a rapprochement with Armenia and, and also, um, you know, have, as we know, one Armenian uh, member of parliament. But but obviously, yes, the main Stream establishment is 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 behind Azerbaijan. This seems to be yes part part of a trend of a more uh, aggressive, uh, assertive Turkey. The question for me, and I, I can't answer this question. Not um, people in Turkey could answer it better. Is uh, it seems to me uh, that Turkey has never had an interest in this conflict restarting. Uh, they obviously have brother relations with Azerbaijan, but also differences with Azerbaijan, that they're interested in, in stability in the Caucasus and ultimately have an interest in restarting the relationship with Armenia. So the question for me is how much this is driven purely by domestic politics, waving the flag, supporting our brothers, um, or whether there's going to be actually a significant um, real assistance to Azerbaijan in this fight. Obviously, a few military trainers in Azerbaijan, but but I don't see any members of the Turkish armed forces actually taking part in combat yet. Uh, that would be a, a, a significant red line if that's the case. There are unconfirmed reports, not only about the export of a uh, group of batches of jihadists, but also usage of drones uh, belonging to Turkish armed forces. But these are unconfirmed reports. If there is an involvement, Turkish involvement, proxy or not, if there will be any Turkish involvement, uh, there are already some comments that um, such involvement would be uh, commented or perceived, should be called perceived as Turkish response to the Russian and Syrian advances in, in Idlib province. Um, how, how do you see, uh, how, what would we expect from the Russian responses to this uh, escalating conflict in terms of, in the context of uh, Turkey-Russia relations as well? I think Russia finds itself in a difficult position here. Russia wants to be the mediator. This is Russia's ambition, is to be the mediator of this conflict to, and to resolve this conflict on, on Russian terms. Um, and, or, or else to leave it unresolved, but, but without any fighting. Um, Russia obviously has a military uh, alliance with Armenia. As a, as a base in Armenia, but also um, pretty good relations with Azerbaijan. The presidents Aliyev and Putin are pretty close. They see to eye, eye to eye on, on many things. Um, they have a kind of quite mutually supportive relationship. So Russia has stakes on both sides in this conflict. Um, so the, uh, and obviously this uh, causes anger in Armenia that, that uh, our military ally and military patient patron does not act more decisively in our favor when fighting breaks out. Uh, the question is, if, if Turkey would get more actively involved, then then Russia's job really is, is to, Russia is on the Turkey-Armenian border. Uh, Russia has obligations 
uh, under treaty obligations to defend Armenian territory. So I think Russia could be dragged more into the conflict unwillingly if, if Turkey gets dragged more in. But I think Russia really wants to de-escalate this as, as soon as possible. The Karabakh Armenians have a reputation of being tough fighters. Uh, and also, um, I think the military perspective is important to see in this in this escalating conflict. Uh, what kind of weaponry do, do the sides use? Uh, which one is more superior to the other? Uh, also given the, the, the uh, will of the Karabakh Armenians to, to protect whatever they have gained. Uh, how do you, can you give us a, a sort of a walk us through this, this military perspective? Yeah, I mean, I think the conventional analysis is that, is that no one can really win a military conflict. I mean, uh, ground, land can be reconquered or conquered. Uh, but there, a lot of destruction can happen since the war. The war of the 1990s was a very low tech affair. And since then, particularly in the last uh, few years, Azerbaijan in particular has got a lot of heavy weaponry, uh, military drones, as you mentioned, um, or its own military drones, um, also long range artillery, even cruise missiles, aircraft and so on. So um, it can do a lot of destruction with with that weaponry. Um, but the Armenian side has uh, the advantage of the terrain, the high ground, um, so that um, it's very well defended uh, geography. Um, so that there's a kind of standoff there between one side has the better weaponry, the other side has the geography on its side. And, and certainly the last time they came to fighting in 2016, the Azerbaijani side recovered some small pockets of territory, but not very much. As soon as it has to use uh, men on the ground, um, it, it's more equal, um, and the Azerbaijani army is basically a conscript army, which it, which is not so effective. Um, all of which is to say, um, you know, the, the huge destruction can happen. The, the Armenians also have these long-range missiles that they could fire. Um, you know, we hope not at, at Azerbaijani cities. So, it, it, a very they have a lot of destructive potential um, and. Um, the hope is is that this will be a three or four day affair um, in which both sides can claim a small victory and then there can be a ceasefire. But um, who knows how, how it will end? Uh, one final question, and I'm curious about uh, the sort of the leaderships of, on both sides. Armenia declared state of emergency, a sort of a national mobilization. Not yet anything from Azerbaijan uh, that we heard, uh, but. Uh, uh, if it, it is it is Baku that that uh, triggered this this conflict by opening uh, fire, etc. What would uh, Ilham Aliyev gain uh, from this uh, this escalation, and how would it also affect uh, Yerevan government, politically, domestically speaking? Well, it's a big gamble. Um, it's a big gamble because. Um... You know, you could win a lot, but you can also lose a lot. Um, in Back in the 1990s, two Azerbaijani leaders uh, lost power in large part due to losses on the Karabakh front. The public expects nothing less than the full liberation of lost lands, and that's incredibly difficult. So um, it's, it's a big gamble. Um, he could win a lot if he recovers some territory, and this could help him domestically. His position is not great. The economy is, is in bad shape. Um, the COVID situation is bad in Azerbaijan. But he can also win a lot. Um, likewise, on, on the Armenian side, but I think the Armenian side, it, there's more solidarity, win or lose, um, uh, and we, we won't, we'll, we'll see that. I don't think we'll see much We'll see less of a blame game in on the Armenian side if this goes wrong. Thomas Deval, an expert on Caucasus, a top expert on Azerbaijan and Armenia, and author of the book Black Garden, was my guest from London. Thank you, Tom, for this conversation. Thank you. Very depressing picture, Yavuz, but we hope for the best. Let's follow it. We have to.